On Point with Craig's Investment Partners. The information provided here is general in nature. It's not financial advice. It doesn't take into account your financial situation, objectives, goals or risk tolerance. All investments are subject to risks and none are guaranteed. So before you make any investment decisions, we recommend you contact an investment advisor. For more information about our services in that regard, you can go to our website, which is craigsip.com. Welcome to On Point. I'm Mark Lister, Investment Director at Craig's Investment Partners, and I'll be talking about a range of topics, including economics, portfolio strategy, investor education, and anything else that's happening out there in financial markets. Morning team, hope everyone is well. Let's run through what we saw across financial markets last week, then let's turn our attention to what's coming up in the week ahead. And October has started well for most markets, the fourth quarter of the year, typically the best quarter of the year for share investors in the US at least, and things have been pretty solid. Most markets were up again last week, buoyed by a robust US jobs report, easing monetary policy, and a pretty good start to the US reporting season. We saw good results from a couple of those banking heavyweights in the US on Friday. Uh, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, some good results there to kick off the reporting season. So the S&P 500 index in America was up 1.1%. It finished last week at new record highs. We also saw major indices in Japan, Europe and Australia rise last week. The UK was down, but only ever so slightly down 0.3%. And emerging markets also took a bit of a breather. They were off 1.7%. But remember, they did have a very strong run through September, and there has been some good gains from Chinese equities and emerging markets more generally in recent times. Locally, the domestic NZX50 posted a pretty healthy gain. It was up 1.8%. That's actually its strongest weekly rise in two months. And the local market is continuing to have a nice rebound. Uh, We saw that come through in July, August, September. It's continued so far into October. And the index is up 9.1% so far in 2024 with two and a half months to go. That is a little above the long-term average. It's certainly better than we've seen for the last three years. Last year, I think the index was up 2 or 3%. The year before that, it was down. The year before that, it was down. So this is the strongest performance we've seen since the 2020 calendar year. And I suspect we will continue to push higher as the year draws to a close. So I'm hopeful that we will crack, uh, crack double digits before the end of this year. Interest rates rose slightly, rose in the US, rose here in New Zealand, that came despite that OCR cut. Not a bad thing, sometimes when long term interest rates go up, that is markets taking a more positive, optimistic view of the future. So we saw that when the Fed cut its uh, policy rate by 50 basis points as well, we saw that long term treasury yield rise because markets saw less recession risk on the horizon and they thought the Fed was getting back to sort of being with the curve rather than behind the curve, so to speak. And I think it's the same here in New Zealand. That 50 basis point cut does show that the Reserve Bank is willing to be proactive, willing to act swiftly and quickly, and that actually makes the outlook look a little bit better. So longer term interest rates don't need to be as low as they are because some of those risks of uh, the recession persisting have reduced. So it's not always a bad thing when you see market interest rates go up, and that's what you saw last week. The five-year swap rate was up 21 basis points, finished at 3.75. Right, let's run through some of the key releases and events of last week. And here in New Zealand, it was obviously all about the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, which reduced the official cash rate again. The second cut of the cycle, the first one came in August. That was after the OCR had spent 15 months at 5.5%. That's the highest we'd seen in 15 years. And last week, the cut was bigger than the first one. It was 50 basis points last week. The initial first cut in August was just 25 basis points. So the OCR is now at 4.75%, which is the lowest in more than a year and a half. And I guess the reason for that bigger cut, which was pretty much priced in by financial markets, the reason for that bigger cut is that the Reserve Bank has grown more confident 
that inflation is under control. It noted that it believes inflation is already within that 1% to 3% target range and that it's headed for that 2% midpoint. There's also a little bit of nervousness about the state of the economy. If you look at the statement from last week, it did talk about subdued activity, weak business investment, weak consumer spending and a softening labour market. So just like the Federal Reserve in the United States, our central bank is less worried about inflation because it's largely dealt to that and it's shifted its focus to the economy, the labour market, and it wants to make sure that it doesn't overplay its hand. So uh, good news for investors, good news for borrowers that we saw that 50 basis point cut. Where to from here for the OCR? Well, it's already come down from 5.5 to 4.75, and it will come down further. There's one more meeting left this year that comes in late November, and that will be the last until February next year. They take a bit of a break over the summer. So late November markets are very strongly expecting another 50 basis point rate cut that would see the OCR come down to 4.25 percent that would be one and a quarter percent below where it was just a few months ago so uh, five and a half percent was the peak looking like we're going to finish the year at four and a quarter so uh, a big move and that will provide a lot of support to the economy confidence to businesses investors and the housing market Beyond that, financial markets see the pace of easing continuing into next year. So the OCR is expected to be pretty close to its lows, its ultimate lows of around that 3% level. That's where the market sees the neutral rate, the steady state rate. So that's where they see the OCR settling 3% around this time next year. So over the back half of 2025. The upcoming November meeting uh, will be really interesting as well because we will see a fresh monetary policy statement released. That means we'll get a new set of economic and financial forecasts from the Reserve Bank. We didn't get that last week. It was just the one-page statement. We've cut the OCR and here's why, but we didn't get the forecast pack. Uh, So the last forecast pack came in August and we will get a new one in November. So that will allow us to compare the RBNZ's worldview with what financial markets are seeing and thinking. Right, the key event in the US was the September inflation report, and this was a little hotter than expected, which does suggest that inflation is under control, but the Fed still can't completely take its eyes off these pricing pressures. They've still got to make sure they're mindful of risks to the economy, but also risks to inflation remain stubbornly high. The headline CPI rose 0.2% for the month, the core CPI up 0.3%. Both of those were marginally ahead of forecasts at an annual level. The headline CPI slowed to 2.4%. Again, that's a little ahead of forecasts. Still the lowest in 43 months, which is, you know, near on four years. Uh, Core inflation running a little bit hotter. That's sitting at 3.3% per annum. So that was above forecasts uh, and it was above August levels. And that's close to where that core inflation rate has been sitting for the past five months. It's been in those sort of low threes to mid threes. So there are still some elements of inflation pressures in the US economy, which is understandable because the economy is still in good shape. So a bit of a mixed bag on that front, but markets took it in stride. Turning to the week ahead, and there will be a lot to watch as always, in the US bond markets are closed on Monday, uh, Columbus Day holiday, so equity markets will be open on Monday, but bond markets will be closed. In the US we'll be watching, at least on the economic front, retail sales, they'll be out later in the week. Uh, Elsewhere, Chinese GDP figures will be out, inflation in the UK, and there'll be an ECB meeting. So a couple of those things are worth singling out for discussion. China, obviously, been in focus lately with some of those stimulus measures that we've seen that's given the equity markets a bit of a boost. China's a really important economy for New Zealand in particular, important for the whole world. China's the second biggest economy in the world uh, behind the US. But for us here in New Zealand, we are quite intertwined with 
with China. Uh, they're one of our biggest trading partners, one of our biggest export markets, important for tourism, agricultural products and those sorts of things. So on Friday at three o'clock, we will be watching Chinese economic growth figures for the September quarter. These will be accompanied by monthly indicators, fixed asset investment, industrial production, retail sales. GDP is expected to have risen 0.9% in the September quarter. That would take annual growth to 4.6%, which would be good if we were talking about New Zealand or the US or Australia. But for China, that's a little lower than they would like it to be. Their growth target is 5% for 2024, so they're tracking a little bit behind that. Although they're very hopeful that some of these stimulus measures will boost activity over the last few months of the year and that that will push GDP growth back up to that target of five. They're not far away, but it'll be good to get a read on the Chinese economy uh, late in the week. The ECB as well, that's the biggest central banking event. There is a lot of Fed speakers that will be out and about talking, so markets will be watching and listening to some of those comments. But in terms of actual decisions, the ECB is the most high-profile central bank that is meeting and making a decision. That will be on Thursday evening. The ECB was the first of the big central banks to cut its policy rate. That happened back in June. Then it paused in July and then it cut for a second time in September. So its policy rate, which started at a peak of 4% at the beginning of the year, and that's the highest that we've seen since the euro came into being in the late 1990s. So started at 4%, 225 basis point cuts, and now they're at 3.5%. We've seen good progress on inflation in Europe. We got some uh, some flash, the flash estimate for the annual inflation rate in Europe um, last week, I think it was. It's come down to 1.8%. September, so below that sort of two percent target. So I think the ECB does have um, the opportunity to keep cutting rates now because inflation has come down more than we've seen in New Zealand and the United States. So I think you will see a cut from the ECB this week. Um, I'd say twenty five basis points, and then I think they'll they'll cut again at the December meeting as well, and that would see the policy rate over there end the year at 3%, which is a lot lower than you're expecting to see here in New Zealand or across the Tasman or in the US by the end of this year. The ECB is then expected to see its policy rate decline further to about 2% through to the end of 2025. So that's kind of interesting because that's a lower neutral rate or a lower level that markets see the ECB rate settling at than is the case here in New Zealand or in the US. Here in New Zealand and the US, markets see about 3% as that steady state level, whereas in Europe it's seen as being 2%. So we'll we'll watch and wait and see how things play out there. But uh, you will get a cut in Europe this week, I strongly suspect. Probably more important than some of those economic and central bank releases, internationally at least, will be the international reporting season, which really ramps up this week. I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, episode that we'd seen a couple of good results out of some of the US banking heavyweights, JP Morgan, Wells Fargo. Well, things really get busy this week and there's lots of companies reporting and I think that will set the tone for where markets internationally go over the next little while because you've got the US market sitting at record highs, it's had a very good run, markets are in good spirits with the economy strong, you've got interest rates coming down, you've got inflation that largely looks under control so the stars have aligned for a good performance um, from major share markets in the US and elsewhere and I guess the only piece of the puzzle that we need to get confirmation of is that companies are still earning good profits and that that trajectory of profitability and earnings growth is still on track and we'll find this out over the next few weeks. There's lots of companies that are set to announce results. Some of the highlights will be Goldman Sachs, Johnson & Johnson, LVMH, Nestle, Netflix, TSMC, Procter & Gamble. So lots and lots to watch over the days ahead. That will be something that markets are very focused on in terms of the global picture. It's a busy week on the local front too, and the headline act this week will be the September quarter CPI report, the inflation report. This is out at 10.45 a.m. on Wednesday, and this will be particularly important this time around on the back of last week's big OCR cut, and with markets looking ahead to that November meeting and expecting another 
50 basis point decline. There's two key releases between now and then. This is one of them, and the next one will be the upcoming labour force report that will tell us whether the unemployment rate has risen more than expected. So this week's CPI report, the inflation report for the September quarter, the RBNZ is expecting headline inflation to increase 2.3%. That will be down from 3.3% three months ago. That would actually be the lowest in more than three years, well below that 30-year high of 7.3% that we saw in 2022 and starting to get very close to that 2% midpoint of the Reserve Bank's target band. So at 2.3%, and the economists out there actually see it being a little bit lower than that. They see it coming in at about 2.3%. 2%. So you'll be in the low twos, you'll be getting very close to that midpoint and that will give the Reserve Bank confidence that it can keep cutting the OCR and getting it back to that neutral setting which is somewhere in the 25 to 3.5% range depending on who you ask. However, we will be watching the detail this week, that will be important as well and this is because of the differences between domestic inflation pressures and imported inflation pressures. Over the last couple of years, imported inflation has fallen back, but domestic inflation, non-tradables inflation as they call it, has remained quite sticky, quite high. And that is something you might see in this report too. So even though you've got that headline inflation rate coming down into the low twos, that will largely be driven by falling tradables or imported inflation. That part of the basket is expected to be tracking at minus 1.6% per annum. So it's negative and that's dragging the headline inflation rate down. In contrast, non-tradables inflation, domestic inflation, still running at an annual rate of 5.1% as per the Reserve Bank forecast from August. So that would still be quite high. So we do need to pay attention not only to those headline levels that we hear about in the press release, but to look under the hood a little bit and figure out just what that detail tells us. But this will be the highlight of the local week. It's out on Wednesday morning. A little bit ahead of that, you will get uh, the latest dairy auction results. They're also out early on Wednesday morning. Dairy price has been going in the right direction lately. The headline index a couple of weeks ago gained another 1.2%. So far this year it's up almost 14%. So prices have rebounded strongly. They're at the highest levels in about two years. Like most commodities, dairy prices are benchmarked in US dollars, which means the weakness we've seen lately in the Kiwi dollar relative to the greenback has given us an added tailwind. That's good news. And put all of that together and it has allowed Fonterra to increase its milk price forecast for this season by 50 cents to $9. We got that last month so at now nine dollars this season's payout would be the second highest in history so dairy sector is in reasonably good spirits and hopefully we'll see more good news this week we'll also get a fresh housing market report this week from the real estate institute this will be out on tuesday at 9 a.m so a day ahead of that dairy auction and the inflation report which are both out on wednesday this will cover the month of september and when we look back to the august report it was a little bit mixed, still a bit sluggish out there, although there were some signs of stability. Sales volumes fell 5% from a month earlier. The days to sell increased in Auckland and everywhere else. House prices, though, just went sideways, which is good news. Sideways is good news after five consecutive monthly declines before this. So this time around, we'll be interested to see if there's any increase in optimism or any boost in activity from some of those big declines we've seen in mortgage rates and whether that's starting to flow through to the market yet. I do think house prices will recover over the next little while on the back of an improving economy, on the back of declines in mortgage rates. At the same time, you've still got a bit of a shaky labour market out there. Unemployment is expected to to rise before it starts falling again and you've got low affordability because prices are still 20 odd percent above pre-COVID levels. I know they fell sharply from 2021 through to where we are now but remember they increased probably close to 50 percent in the two years leading up to that late 2021 peak so prices are far from affordable. So uh, if you're thinking about the housing market I think you can bank on a more positive environment and you can bank on gains from here in terms of overall prices. However, don't 
expect anything too dramatic. I think you're looking at something in that five, six, seven percent range rather than 10% plus so we'll just have to wait and see but it certainly is a mixed bag out there and we'll get some some early signs of where we're at in the housing market on Tuesday morning. Also a couple of things to watch on the corporate front here in New Zealand there are a few AGMs Genesis Energy, Meridian Energy, Auckland Airport, Tourism Holdings so we will hopefully get some trading updates from some of those businesses and get an updated look about how activity is tracking. Similar story across the Tasman uh, lots of AGMs to keep an eye on Telstra, Bank of Queensland, Commonwealth Bank, Origin Energy so a few heavyweights there like I said earlier, lots going on in terms of the the earning season internationally, but still a few things to watch here in this part of the world too. So that's how the week is shaping up. Uh, let's hope some of this uh, optimism we're seeing across markets can continue into the year end. Let's hope that inflation report gives us confirmation that the Reserve Bank is right to be cutting the OCR aggressively and that there are more cuts on the horizon. And let's hope that we do see some good news from some of those international businesses and that earnings growth is still tracking as expected. Right, thanks for listening team. We'll talk again soon. For more insights, visit craigsip.com.